Listen to the birds. Level A2, Oxford Reading University. Part 2. You will find part 1 here. Then they heard the black bird hit it and fall dead. Nat's wife started washing his cuts. The children were crying, scared to death. Don't worry, he said softly, I am fine. Go play together while your mother is busy. The children went into another room. Thousands of birds are flying toward the cities, Nat said in a soft voice. They will attack people on the streets and then try to get inside the houses. Why doesn't the government send the army, Nat? asked the woman, white in the face. They have had no time, he replied. Nobody has expected this sort of disaster. He decided that it was safer to sleep in the kitchen. They made a fire. Nat brought the mattresses down from the bedrooms. We are going to play. Imagine that we are camping, he told the children, trying to look cheerful. Come on, help me arrange everything here. Together with his wife, they moved a dresser across the room and placed it against the door. At least we don't hear those awful sounds anymore, thought Nat. At six o'clock, they turned on the radio. This is London, it reported. All across the country, birds are grouping up and attacking people. There isn't much we can do immediately. Everyone must keep calm. You must not leave your houses tonight. Because of the difficult situation, there will be no programs until tomorrow morning. Then the radio played the national anthem and fell quiet. Let's help Mommy prepare dinner, Nat suggested, smiling at his children. They had dinner together. It seemed to Nat that the noise outside became quieter. Then came a loud sound that they knew very well. I hear planes, Nat's wife cried excitedly, and gunfire. It is coming from the sea. They will kill all the birds. But soon they heard an awful noise. Something fell from the sky and exploded. Have they dropped a bomb on the birds, the woman suggested? I don't think so, Nat replied. If you hit the like button right now, we'll make sure to make more audiobooks like this. He knew a plane produced the sound. Birds threw themselves into the engines and broke them. It was so stupid to fight birds with planes. They will think of something else, Nat thought. After all, the best minds of England are working on the problem right now. Now let's go to bed, he ordered. His wife put the children to bed, and they talked in quiet voices. The birds only attack when the water is high, Nat said. Tomorrow morning, when the tide is low, I will try to reach the farm. Perhaps I will manage to get some food. Please do not leave me alone with the children, his wife cried. Nat fell asleep, but soon his wife woke him up. They have started it again, she said. I cannot listen to them alone, and something is burning. The birds were hitting the door and the boards and the windows, brushing them with their wings. Nat smelled some burned meat and feathers. I forgot to put more wood into the fire, he thought. The birds were getting inside through the chimney. Nat ran for a bottle of kerosene. Then he threw some paper into the fire and lit it up. It was dangerous, but he had no other choice. Soon, burned birds started falling from the chimney and right onto the kitchen floor. The children were crying. It is going to be fine now, Nat said. Come on, Jill, help me find some wood. We will keep the fire up together. 
Another hour passed. Nat asked his wife for a cigarette. There are only two left in the pack, she reported. I will have one now, said Nat, and keep the other for a rainy day. All we have to do is wait until the morning, he thought. When the tide is low again, I will get food and wood from the farm. Nat, he heard his wife's worried voice. The radio, it is already time for the morning news, but nothing is coming. Send this story to a friend who likes horrors. They waited for another hour. No sound came. Nat turned it off. What are you doing? His wife cried. We will miss the report. There won't be any report, he replied shortly. He walked up to the door and opened it slowly. The air was cold and fresh. He went into the garden. The gulls were not there. They were riding the sea again, preparing to attack later. But the land birds never left. They sat on the ground and in the trees. However, none of them attacked. They just sat there and watched him. I must get to the farm, Nat thought. We need food and wood. He returned to the house and checked all the windows. We are going too, his wife said. I'd rather die than stay here without you. Nat agreed. They took some bags and went to the farm. Dad, there are birds in the fields, Jill said, and held his hand tight. It is too light, Nat replied quietly. They won't do anything. At the turn to the farm, Nat stopped. The house looked strangely quiet. No smoke was coming from the chimney. Wait here, Nat said. Nat came close to the farm gate. What was left of Mr. Trigg's body lay there, his gun next to it. There were a lot of dead birds around him. Mrs. Trigg's body lay in the house by the window, next to the telephone. All the windows were broken. She was trying to call someone when the birds got her, Nat realized. I must collect what I can find here and leave. They had several hours. Nat filled the car with some necessary supplies. He picked up his family and drove them home. Then he returned to the farm to get more food. On his way back, Nat drove to a telephone box and tried to call. The line was off. He climbed the hill and looked around. There was no sign of life in the whole village. The houses looked dark and empty. All the windows were broken, and there was no smoke. Only the birds sat around everywhere, waiting. Now is the perfect time to shoot them, Nat thought. They are a great target. Why are there no planes or ships to fight them? Back at home, Nat checked all the windows and the door again. He even climbed up to the roof and fixed all the holes. Then he looked at the sea and smiled softly. He could see ships coming closer to the beach. The Navy is going to help, he thought to himself. But then he looked closer and knew he was wrong. What he saw wasn't the Navy. It was an army of gulls slowly rising to the sky. Nat returned to the house, closed the door, and lit the lamp. It was around two o'clock. Time to go to bed, Johnny said. They sat at the table and had dinner. Soon the noises began. The birds hit the door and tapped it and brushed it with their wings. We have enough supplies for several days, Nat thought. The house is safe for now. Later, when the tide is low again... I will go outside and put some barbed wire on the windows. 
He listened to the birds' noises and thought, For millions of years they have kept so much hate for humankind in their little brains. Now they are destroying it, slowly but surely, like some machines. Give me the last cigarette, he told his wife. I forgot to bring some more from the farm. How stupid. Then he turned on the radio that didn't say anything, threw the empty pack into the fire, and watched it burn. Do you want more English audiobooks with translations and transcriptions? Check out appewa.com. You can read books and learn new words every day. And now enjoy another English story.